So the Apple Intelligence rollout has definitely been one of the more confusing products that Apple has announced in recent years. And what I've been trying to do in this kind of series is kind of getting rid of all that smoke and mirrors to letting you guys know what you're going to get, when you're going to get it, and what iteration of Apple Intelligence you will be getting with what version of iOS. So, so depending on when you're watching this video, you're probably on the 18.0 public version, meaning that you have no Apple Intelligence whatsoever and 18.1 is right around the corner, which we should get at the end of October, and have a whole video discussing what Apple Intelligence features we'll be getting there. But for the most part, it's those simple ones like writing tools, summaries and notifications, prioritizing messages, things that I would consider low hanging fruit from an Apple intelligence or AI perspective. But with iOS 18.2, that's when a lot of the more kind of vibrant stuff that Apple's been touting like visual intelligence and Genmojis and things like that start to kind of pan out with 18.2. So let's talk about everything to expect with 18.2 and which devices will be supporting that. So in terms of when to expect 18.2, if we look back at previous years when Apple released their 0.2 iteration of whatever software they're on, you're looking at mid-December for a 0.2 release date. If you go back to 17.2, December 11th of 2023, 16.2 was December 13th of 22, and then iOS 15.1 was December 13th of 2021. So if we continue on with this pattern, we should be getting 18.2 sometime in December, and that's where Apple's really gonna start to flex their muscles with their Apple intelligence features, especially with all the stuff that they've been advertising, which again, is still one of the more confusing kind of advertising and rollouts that I've ever seen from an Apple product. So 18.2 should bring out a lot of the stuff that Apple's been mentioning, especially the, some of the stuff that I really want, with one feature in particular, which we're going to save to the end. But to start off with 18.2, what you should expect, the first thing you're going to see is Image Playground. So this is going to be Apple's version of creating some sort of image from scratch based on some sort of prompt or text that you feed Apple Intelligence or feed Siri in this example. So basically, it's going to let you type in, you know, a dog on their birthday, blowing out candles or a ladybug on the top of the Empire State Building that's about to jump off to then fly off to somewhere else. So those are the things you can kind of prompt Siri and then it'll spit out some sort of image in three different genres, right? You have the ability to do it in animation style, illustration style, and then sketch style. And then of course you can share these in iMessage, you can share these however you see fit because it should turn into a shareable image after the fact. So that is going to be Image Playgrounds, and again, more of a creative thing than a functional thing. And then in that same light, we should be getting Genmojis as well, which is essentially the same thing as Image Playgrounds, but in an emoji form factor. So being able to type out some sort of emotion, or maybe there isn't an emoji currently in the emoji library that kind of would give you the emotion that you're trying to portray. So then you can just type out to Siri what you want your emoji to do and look like, and then it'll spit out an emoji of whatever you want it to do. So again, it's just basically Image Playgrounds, but in an emoji form factor. But now let's get into the more functional features of what to expect with 18.2. So the next thing to expect is going to be finally that ChatGPT integration. Now Apple has been talking about this integration since WWDC and they've let us know from a privacy perspective and I won't get too into the privacy part of it, we'll get into that a little bit further, but essentially saying that ChatGPT will not be actively looking at your stuff, it will not be in your phone. Every single time that it goes to ChatGPT, it'll ask you for permission to go to ChatGPT and it'll only share the corresponding information that ChatGPT would need in order to give you a subsequent answer in return. So definitely don't worry about it from a privacy perspective, but we'll touch on that in a future video. But essentially what ChatGPT is gonna be integrated in is when it needs to have more world knowledge, something that isn't on device. Because again, if you start to save everything on device on your iPhone, then the storage sizes are going to need to be astronomical. And then also the compute's going to have to be crazy. So keeping this off of Apple's iPhones is going to be something that's definitely beneficial for the longevity of your iPhone physically, right on the hardware side. So being able to tap into ChatGPT when you need to, to get some more information, or maybe to be able to analyze a certain image or a certain document or something like that. And then also being able to tap into it in the writing tools as well. So right now, Apple has their own version of writing tools with 18.1 to help you summarize and kind of change up the verbiage and change the tone of different text that you're typing out. So being able to integrate ChatGPT into that to give you even more customization will definitely be a net positive in my opinion. So that should be coming with 18.2 and let's see exactly how Apple rolls this out. And then from a notification standpoint, we're finally gonna get priority notifications. And a great example of what this is gonna look like is if you are an 18.1 beta or if you are an 18.1, depending on when you're watching this, then as of right now with 18.1 and go into an Apple intelligence interruptions mode, which basically is priority messages just wrapped up in a focus mode, basically only letting certain messages come through to you. And that's what priority notifications is gonna be, pretty much listing the top few applications or notifications that you should look at at the very top of your notification list and then subsequent notifications after the fact. Another big redesign coming to the mail application is going to be finally prioritized messaging. 
and being able to categorize with Apple intelligence what mail notifications you should be looking at versus not. And a lot of mail applications have been doing this already, but having this built in natively to Apple's mail app will definitely make a lot of people happy. But you're gonna have different buckets for your inbox when it comes to your email. It's gonna be your primary, your transactions, your updates, and your promotions, making it easier to navigate to find exactly what you need when you are in the mail application. And then last but not least, my favorite piece of 18.2 is gonna be all about that camera control button and what it's going to be able to do moving forward. So the first thing it's gonna do is gonna to start to adopt and mimic what actual shutters do on real cameras, which is that half press to autofocus and lock in on that focus, and then fully tapping in to take that image or fully tapping in to actually start a video recording. So that will be coming to camera control, which I don't know why it's not already out with the camera control button because I'm already half pressing just by habit to try to autofocus when in reality, I'm just kind of opening up the different menu. So being able to now do that with the camera control button, I think is gonna be extremely beneficial. And then lastly, again, with that camera control button, we're gonna finally get visual intelligence, which brings Apple intelligence again to the visual field into the real world. So being able to very quickly reach into your pocket, press the camera control button, take a picture of let's say a concert poster or of a phone number or of a menu, to instantly translate something or save a date or save something on your calendar is going to be awesome. I think this is gonna be great in so many different avenues and so many different verticals from just something that's more entertaining to something that's extremely useful for people that maybe are hard of seeing or hard of hearing and being able to use visual intelligence to help you navigate the real world. So visual intelligence coming to the iPhone, I think is going to be the biggest thing of 18.2 and probably the biggest headliner of Apple intelligence in general, at least in my personal opinion. And then with 18.2, finally, it should roll out to a few more countries like Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and finally the UK, giving Apple intelligence a little bit more oomph when it comes to more and more people adopting it. Because I do think whether you love it or you hate it, Apple intelligence is going to be in your iPhone. It's going to be in the forefront of what Apple's marketing schemes are going to be. And they've really gone head first into this Apple intelligence thing. And it remains yet to be seen how useful it's going to be. But if it's like 18.1, I use it every now and then. I'm just excited with 18.2 because I think it's going to bring a lot more features moving forward. But that will do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And let me know in the comment down below what you think. Are you using Apple intelligence features currently? Are you on 18.1 beta? When are you watching this? Are you excited for 18.1? Definitely stay subscribed because once 18.2 beta comes out, we'll be doing a complete walkthrough on exactly what's new and how to use it. But that'll do it, everybody. If you want to watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right here. And I think you're going to like this video down here. Till next time, everybody. Peace.